to. John, good it. to see you again. It's great to see you again. You have aged mightily since the last time I saw you. Wow. Is your hair longer too? No, oh, it's definitely longer. Yeah. Now people ask me in Acadia, do you do you think Cole will cut his hair? And I told him what you told me. No, you're not going to cut it. Well, I'm not saying no. I'm just saying I can't imagine it. But if I got the bug up my whatever <laughs> one day to cut it, I would. Yeah. But I I don't imagine ever cutting it again. How about that? So will it naturally get short? I guess it could go all the way to the floor eventually. I don't know. You're going to see what happens, huh? Yeah. You know, hey, to each their own. I think it looks really ridiculous, but uh, <laughs> I'm just jealous. You know, say, I but don't you know you. what? In all honesty, I don't really care what others <laughs> think of my hair. I don't. Yeah, that shocks me. I mean, uh, let's face it, we all, I think some comedians have done this before. We all at some point in our life stop caring about how we dress and how we wear our hair. And we tend to freeze. Some of it's in 1985. Mine just happens to be 1967. Yeah. And, you know, so people well, from yeah. my generation are going, yeah, right on, dude. Well, the other thing that uh, that doesn't surprise me is your whole idea of photographic celibacy. You're the only one I know. I, I I rarely have ever run into yeah. anyone else who does well, it. Well, not only that, but you do you remember when you were back in Virginia for something expo? What was in that term? Nature Visions. Yeah, Nature's Nature Vision, Vision with uh, our, our good friend Jim Norman and Mary O'Neill, yes. right? And yes. we were back there and you were doing a lecture and I came in and sat in the front row and you kept on saying my name over i was going to say time. your name 50 times i think <laughs> <laughs> that was funny in and of itself but what really was interesting and i thought we'd talk about this for a minute today <clears throat> there was one particular gentleman in that audience who was on the edge of belligerent i mean he wasn't just disagreeing with you about the idea of photographic celibacy he was down like, I mean, he just couldn't even grasp the idea of why anyone would ever deny themselves the possibility of looking at other people's images. So I wonder what, what the heck, what, what, again, I, I could understand saying, yeah, not for me, but this guy was vocally belligerent in front of hundreds of people. Why such a, an, a reaction? I wonder. I've had some strong reactions, um, a couple more. I had a guy in the middle of a presentation before COVID when we, we did presentations live. Yeah. He stood up and he goes, you do what? He goes, why would you possibly deny yourself the pleasure of looking at other people's images? And then uh, Brooks even wrote an article about it and yeah. uh, he didn't mention names, but he, if I could paraphrase, he said, boy, that's stupid. <laughs> in that's fact, exactly when I, right yeah. when we just when we talked with brooks and had that interview that was published on october 24th right. i think near the end we talk about photographic celibacy yes well i don't he, know why people react that way i'm not standing up there and saying this is how you should do it i say this is what i do so i don't know why someone should feel threatened by a stupid idea or an outlandish idea when it's not being forced upon them or yeah not judging them for not doing it. So I, I I only think maybe it touches a nerve. Yeah. Yeah, maybe it does. Uh, you know, but to tie into that, you know, our friend Roger Reapple, I, I always, I you think know, I that, only see it in spelling. I don't know how to Roger. I'm terrible. Roger, Roger, I, Roger, I apologize. And he, he was recently published in Lens Work. And I think, you know, did you, I, if I remember, you looked at that and you had, you had a comment about that remind me what did i say well you i think you had said crap now because i think roger was proud and we oh. probably wanted to show you yes but the problem now that creates a conundrum for you and what's the conundrum well i believe in creating honest work and my definition is it's not something i've seen from others that i quote borrow or yeah. double quote steal because <laughs> yeah. i think that's dishonest yeah. so doggone it now that i've seen it i can't do it yeah, which is interesting, pretty strong. And you won't. I know you well yeah. enough to know that, like, if you've seen my black and white auroras now, there's no way you'll you'll probably never even trip a shutter. No, I might try it myself, but I would never show it and I would never try to do a portfolio. I just think that's in such poor taste. And that's just me. But yeah. I just I, I think, come on. 
Yeah, well, that'll lead to our next discussion. Um, if you want to join us, you know, for our next. Oh, by the way, before we do that, uh, and remind me what the next discussion will be, because I'll forget. But um, for those who might be just joining us for the first time, and they're saying, "What is photographic celibacy?" So, just in a, you know, in a minute, photographic celibacy and why it's important to you. I don't look at other photographers' work. Now, that's not other artists' work, just other photographers' work, because I don't want to be influenced either by their idea or their style or their subject matter. Yeah. And so I want to create that honest work, and I want to come up with ideas that are uniquely mine. Now, they may not be unique to the, the larger world, because I did submit to Lenswork my new, Dunes of Nude, and Brooke said, oh, I've seen that a hundred times. But it was unique to me, so it was honest work. Yeah. So I just have found I do better when I'm isolating myself from the ideas and styles of others. Yeah. I, I'm great. That way, folks who are listening and wondering, and, and that's hard to do for what, what we hear, at least the feedback is really hard for most other people to do that. They enjoy looking at other people's work. I do too. But you know what? I enjoy something even more than looking at other people's work. Right. And that is creating the work that I love and that I'm proud of. So it's yeah. a sacrifice I'm willing to make. And, and I just want to point out the exact opposite of photographic celibacy is what John does. And that's photographic promiscuity. Yes. He's all over the place, man. He's like day and night looking uh, at other people. It's the reason I lead workshops. I've got 10 customers who all have great images and I just keep looking at their screens and going doing that. <laughs> Nothing I do is original. I, you, you do honest work. I do dishonest work and I'm promiscuous. <laughs> Except for the portfolio you've gotten lens work. That's honest work. That is honest work. Yeah. I mean, obviously a million people have done the Aurora in color, uh, but I just saw it in black and white. The rhythm of the Aurora is what was intriguing to me. And so just, to speak to that for a second by removing color from an aurora which everybody sees as green right or reds or whatever it it was able to strip away the color allowed me to express what i was in love with with those images yeah. and it had yeah. nothing to do with color color was actually a distraction to the experience yeah. of being in the aurora and, and it was a me too image if you had done it in color yeah. And, and, and this, you know, despite the stupid title you chose, they're wonderful images, John. Thank you, Cole. I appreciate that. <laughs> and they're all, by the way, they were all two page spreads, all 16. <laughs> With 